If we bring a guy in motion, going to run it with uh, Reggie, I believe. He cuts inside, has a hole. Reggie into 15. Reggie into 10. Touchdown, Reginald Lewis. What a great run. Brought him in motion, handed it off to him. He takes it in to give the Blazers a 20 to 3 lead. Boy, what kind of moves he put from down here, guys. I tell you what, that was a great cutback. And, uh, absolutely, Tom. I'm sure you see it down there. We see it up here. It was a great cutback by Reginald Lewis. The David Dean Show. Your weekly look at Valdosta State University Blazer football. Here's your host, Dick Rocky, along with head coach David Dean for a look at this week's Blazer football action. Hello and welcome to the David Dean Show. I'm Dick Rocky with the head coach, Valdosta State, back on the winning track with an impressive 58 to 10 win over Ever Waters and Coach. Uh, I guess we can say it's just what the doctor ordered for Valdosta State. This type of game maybe you needed. You got a lot of people win, get a win, get the confidence back. Yeah, we did. It was it was great that uh, we I think we dressed 71 guys and about 68, 69 of them were able to go in there. The only guys we didn't play were guys that uh, we dress for emergency purposes that we want a red shirt. And uh, I thought we played well on both sides of the ball. Had a good night special team wise. So. Uh, anytime you can get all those guys an opportunity to play that don't have an opportunity to play, it's a great night. 535 yards of total offense, 352 net rushing yards, which is the second most ever in the history of Valdosta State. The record is uh, 391. That was on 75 rushes. You guys did it last night on 49 rushes, so that's, that's quite impressive. Well, it is. You know, I, like I said, our offensive line continues to play good football. We've got some good running backs back there. And, our wideouts do a great job of blocking down the field, which create now not only five-yard runs, but 10, 12, 15-yard runs. And uh, it's a total team effort. Uh, we got to continue to do that. We've got to be two-dimensional as we continue on through the season. You know how I am about records. Seven rushing touchdowns ties the mark the Blazers set against Edward Waters a couple of years ago. And uh, just an impressive performance by your football team. Now, defensively, they, they had a tremendous first drive against Valdosta State. You held them to a field goal, but I'm thinking, man, they're looking good. Well, we've said all week, uh, you know, they're very good in that offense and what they do. And, and I knew it was going to be a little t difficult for our guys to start off with getting used to the speed of, of that option. You, you can't simulate that in practice. We don't have kids that run the option and do any of that. So you can't simulate that speed. I think once we got used to that, I think our kids settled down and played very good football. All right, Kurt, back with the first half highlights in just a minute. Valdosta State University, encouraging. In-depth inquiry. Hands-on experience. Service and involvement. And a global view. While offering. A beautiful residential campus. Over 100 fields of study. Graduate and online degrees. And championship athletics. All in a warm and friendly community. Get connected and involved. Discover your opportunities. Valdosta State University. Welcome back to the David Dean Show. Coach, uh, a, a big win for Valdosta State. I always try to bring out positives when we lose one, but uh, continue to have some penalty problems. Nine penalties last night. We were talking one on a great kickoff return. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, more holding penalties. It's, uh, is it becoming very frustrating, I would assume? It, it really is, you know, especially when, when you have a touchdown that's called back on a holding penalty, and then we had another big run that was called back on a holding penalty. I don't necessarily agree with the long run that was called back for the holding. I think it was a case of a guy making a great block, and you bury a guy, and they say, well, there's no way the guy can block him that good, and I'm going to throw a flag. Mm -hmm. The kickoff return one, I think it was probably legitimate. I think he had him and, and, and was holding him a little bit. But, you know, we've got to, we got to eliminate those. If, if we're going to be where we want to be and, and, and compete for a conference championship and, and do well in the playoffs, we can't have those big plays brought back by penalties. All right, Coach, let's watch the first half. Valdosta State comes out. Here you'll see in just a moment. And uh, with the youngsters who always lead us, it's really a neat experience, probably about 40 or so, I would think. And uh, they're not they're – not, uh, they're sprinting, they're not just jogging along like we probably would do. Yeah, it's always great when you come out of the locker room and, uh, and see them out there in front of us. And, uh, one thing I have to do is I have to make sure our guys slow down a little bit before they go out. And, uh, you know, they're liable to run over them so keep up. But it's a lot of fun to have those kids come. You wanted the football, which was great. Yeah, we did. We, you know, we knew there was some bad weather coming in, and uh, I was afraid to, to wait to the second half to start our possession. So we wanted to have it while there was no rain. Big third down throw right there to Reggie Lewis. Uh, Caden made a great throw. And 
got us uh, to extend the drive. And you know, we're coming out trying to establish the run early in the game and, and do a good job there. Austin and, and Cedric O'Neill both did a great job of, of carrying the football for us. Our, our line was doing a good job blocking. And I thought they, you, know, you can see right here, what a great job of protection. Uh, our guys did a great job of protection, holding people out. And, and Caden and, and Justin and, and Graham very rarely had any pressure on, on them all night. Good hard run right here by Cedric O'Neill. Good to see him get back into the end zone again. 10 play, 71 yard drive. Yeah, it was a great start. You know, we used some clock and, and went and drove the ball very well and, and finished it off with a touchdown, which was good. Didn't settle for a field goal. They came out and threw a couple of wrinkles at us that we uh, that we weren't expecting. Our kids adjusted to it. And, you can see the athletic ability of their quarterback. He has great speed, he's very elusive. He's hard to contain. He did a great job, I thought, all night. This was a big third down stop right here by Chris Gaspari and uh, forced them into a field goal, which they hit. This is right after the kickoff return that we had for a touchdown. And uh, another big throw right here is Clifford Pettiford. Clifford's from uh, Cook County. And made a big, uh, big catch there and big run. Yeah, I thought Austin did a great job of breaking tackles. He was very elusive all night, made some great moves. There's a little quarterback draw that we ran. And I thought Caden got in right there. He was real close, brought it right down to the, to the goal line, and we, and we sneak it in. We go up 14-3, uh, to three, and, and now you can see from, from this, we've kind of gotten used to the speed of that option, and we're getting on it now. If they have a bad pitch, and Justin Williams there from Valdosta scoops it up, and gives us good, good field position and great job here of making some time. Great throw there to Clifford Pettiford again. And then we run a little wide receiver sweep to Reggie Lewis. He sees his crease on the backside and turns it on. What a great run. You can see all the wideouts blocking downfield, doing a great job of staying on their blocks. And that ended up being the difference in that touchdown right there. If we take that play off, uh, you know, we're, we're not in the end zone and, and we get one in there. Again, great stop right there by Chaz Matthews, and there's one right there by Ryan Smith. They hit us with some passes that, uh, you know, that were, that were good throws by the quarterback, some blown coverages by our guys, and that's you always have that with with the option. You're so keyed up on stopping the run that sometimes some of those guys get loose. Uh, but fortunately, they have another bad pitch. They drop a pitch, and then. What a great run right here by Caden, and you can see the athletic ability. They have, a, they have two really good corners, and number four I thought was a, as good a corner as we faced this year. Plays very hard, does a great job, and uh, he ran Caden down, and you know we kind of bogged down right there and had to settle for the field goal, and uh, Daniel Anderson comes in and, and kicks it through with a great kick right there. A little blitz package we put together, don't quite get him, but we force him to run up there, and uh, they don't convert on the third down. They punt back to us. And again, you can see we got some guys that are fighting hard to, to make some blocks. We end up punting. Don't get a very good punt. We get a punt for about 20, 25 yards, which is not very good. It goes out of bounds and gives them good field position. But our defense does a good job there holding them until right here. And you can see right here they get a wide receiver that gets behind us. We got two guys that are kind of looking at each other. I think each of them thought the other one was going to cover, and they end up hitting us for a big play there for the touchdown. There's the hold right there that we had, which I thought was a great block there by, by Cam Short, and they end up calling a, a hold on us. It was just a great block by him. Brought back a big run, and then with Cedric, Ends up getting some more yardage here. This is a big throw and catch. Came to Reggie Lewis. Reggie was wide open. And uh, real close to slipping out of here on this. Uh, he did touch his knee down right there. And then we come back and, and hit Reggie again on a little short pass. Get down into the red zone, and what a great throw right here by Caden. Threads the needle in between three players. Great throw to Shontavious Jones for the touchdown. And, 
That gives us a 31 to 10 lead there going into the half. That score right before the half I thought was big. Instead yep. of it being a two possession game, it now went to a three possession game. Coach Austin Scott, three, 10, 10 rushes for 97. Uh, Cedric O'Neill, 10 for 71. Caden, five for 70. Had a big run. So, uh, just, I mean, great, great. Uh, good to have three, two or three guys who can do that. Yeah, we, we spread the wealth, and we had a lot of guys that carry the football, had a lot of guys that catch the football, and uh, that's when you're being productive, when you can spread it around and do a lot of different things. Uh, that's, that's, the, that's the nights that you have a lot of fun. Back with the second half in just a minute. Hey, my name is Ryan Smith, play outside linebacker I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and you're watching the David Dean Show. Blazers go to the locker room with a big lead, 31 to 10. And coach, at that point, you decided we're going to start putting some some other people in the game. Well, we felt like if we went out and got a stop, and then offensively went down and scored and, and went up 28 points, that we would start to to roll some people in there because we felt like we had a pretty comfortable lead at that time, and that's what happened. Let's watch the second half highlights. Coach, this team uh, a couple years ago came in very undisciplined, et cetera, had a lot of problems in during that game. This one a little bit, but you, you felt much better about playing these guys this year. Where they... I don't think there's any question. Uh, their coach and, and coaching staff has done a tremendous job of, of bringing discipline into their program. They, they're on the right track. They, they play hard. Uh, they do the right things. They travel well. Uh, you know, I think it, some emotions got a little bit heated at the, towards the end of the game from all the kick coverages that we were having. And th those normally happen, but uh, you know, I thought for the most part, I thought both teams handled themselves very well in that football game. And I, I credit Edward Waters. I think they're, they're gonna be a force to be reckoned with in the NAI through these, through these playoffs here. They're gonna have a great year. We come back out and make a great stop and then and get the ball back. and. and we had Austin carry the ball a good bit. I think on this drive, we, we threw the, uh, ran the ball on every play in this drive. And great pull right there by Caden Cochran. He goes in and scores. And uh, this is right here, is, is we just, this is uncalled for. This is gonna get us beat. This is gonna get us hurt. We've gotta get that corrected. It's two straight weeks that that's happened to us. We've had a block straight up the middle. A one on the field goal and that one on the extra point. I thought this kid here was a really good running back, a good fullback that they have. I think they call them B-backs. Uh, he did a great job. He and the quarterback are really good players. They got good speed on their wing positions. They, they kind of had a bad call right there. I think he was down and they gave us the football. And, you know, we come out and we go very sloppy here. We, we drop a handoff and then we, we make a throw here in the flat. We got long yardage after a five yard penalty and then we throw one into the dirt and end up having to punt the ball back to them and uh, give them the football. And really great play right here by, by Alex Webster. What an, an outstanding interception. I saw that the whole way and he did a great job of scooping that ball right before it hit the ground. Just a great play, great coverage. A good run here by, uh, by Cedric again. Un unfortunately, stuck that foot out of bounds a little bit. And, Big third down, or excuse me, this was a fourth down conversion right here to Chris Anderson. He caught the ball behind the chain and fought and got the first down. Eric Scott makes a run down to the goal line and then Graham Craig does a great job. You can see the great fake there by Eric Scott. Suckered everybody in there and, and then Graham walks in there for the touchdown. He did get everybody because I, <laughs> I missed that one totally. Then they have the bad snap here, and it's just unfortunate they, they end up kicking the ball out of bounds. It's an illegal kick, so we get the ball where, where he kicked from, and, and Justin Roberts is able to go in and score. I don't know if I've ever been associated with a game where quarterbacks, three different quarterbacks score touchdowns in a game, but I was glad to see that, glad to see Justin get another touchdown. And, you know, they try the little hand reverse right there. Great play right there by Kenny Murphy. Kenny's a true freshman. Made some outstanding plays on defense, running them down. Now we got a lot of young guys in here now. Greg Archibong has not had a lot of carries this year. Is in there at running back. Justin is, is running quarterback. And then here's R.J. Davis. R.J.'s converted tight end that we moved back to running back. And you can see he's got a lot of talent. He's from Fitzgerald. And uh, what an outstanding run he had. And, and that was our backup offensive line that opened that hole. Here we get us a fumble interception, I don't know what it was, and then we turn it right back over to him. Those defensive linemen aren't used to carrying the ball. 
Great play there by Xavier Crane. He tipped the ball and good hustle by Fred Williamson. He runs back there and gets over it, up under it, scoops it up. And then we got a senior here, or excuse me, a junior. Trent McGuire is in the game running the football. And this is the last play that we run. We get it down inside the 15 yard line and we, we take a couple of knees and, uh, and run the clock out. Well, a good win for Valdosta State to go to three and two on the season. And uh, as, as we'll talk about in a minute, heading into a couple of tough weeks. Well, actually the rest of the season. Yeah. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But a, a good win for the Blazers to get back on track. And we'll be back in just a moment with the Gander Mountain scoreboard. Jake Thomas, center from Swanee, Georgia. And you're watching the David Dean Show. Welcome back to the Gander Mountain Scoreboard. Coach, some, uh, some scores. We'll start looking at some of the region scores, too, and get your thoughts on it. But uh, first of all, North Alabama, 41 to nothing over Shorter. Yeah, that's a little scary. Shorter's been playing very good this year, and uh, I think they were carrying a 3-1 and one record into that game. And for North Alabama to beat those guys that bad, that says a lot. They must be playing very well. And then uh, West Alabama actually comes from behind to beat West Georgia 24-20. to 20. Yeah, West Georgia had uh, a lead at the half, and then West Alabama uh, ends up winning it. Uh, again, the good football team and, and tells you West Georgia, you know, West Georgia's got a good football team. I, I bet that was a heck of a battle. And then some other scores of surprise, Mars Hill 35 to 28 over Newberry. That's Newberry's first loss. Yeah, it is. You know, Newberry's been playing very good football and, and really surprising that, uh, that they did lose to Mars Hill. Uh, over an SIAC, 50 to seven miles over Benedict and Miles is four and one on the season. Miles just continues to roll. They're, they're a two point conversion away from beating North Alabama and being five and oh right now. So uh, it looks like they may be the top team in the SIAC along with Fort Valley. That'll be a heck of a game when they play each other. And I think I forgot to write their score, but I believe I saw Fort Valley actually got beat last night or yesterday, I believe. So anyway, we're going to start looking at the conference scores and region scores because we'll have that first region ranking sometime in October. Yeah, which, Thursday night, I think Abilene Christian beat Delta State 34-28. Uh, heck, of, heck of a football game. That is right. So uh, all the games are important, but we start paying more attention to what everybody else is doing <laughs> and see what we need to do, which is keep winning. Yeah, October, kind of you start jockeying for that, that region position, and towards the end is, is when they come out with the first – First rankings. All right, Coach, thanks. We'll be back with the Langdale Honda Kia look ahead in just a minute. I got my MBA online at VSU. As a working mom who travels on business, I needed an MBA program that fit my schedule and allowed me to balance both my work and home life. VSU's web MBA was perfect. I was able to spend time with my family in the evenings and then complete my assignments. My MBA is one of my greatest accomplishments. It was hard work, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. Don't wait. Start your MBA today. Welcome back to the Langdale Honda Kid. Look ahead. And Coach, uh, West Georgia came to Valdosta last year and uh, shocked us, beat us. They're playing good football. Lost a close game to West Alabama. So we're going to play up there at 2 o'clock this coming Saturday. Yeah, this is, uh, this is always a fun trip for our kids. They go and play in a stadium that is just probably the class of Division II, in-state rival. Uh, there is kind of some bitterness over last year. We still think he caught the ball out of bounds, but uh, you know, we have to live with that decision. Uh, but it's a new year. They got a new team. We got a new team, and uh, I look forward to going up and uh, hopefully getting a win, our first win in the Gulf South Conference this year. Well, we're not looking ahead to look way ahead, but this is the start of a three-game stretch, really. Uh, West Four. Georgia, North Alabama. And Delta State Delta and shorter or, to finish the season. Yeah, we got four straight Gulf South Conference games and then finish up the year with Texas A&M, Kingsville. So, uh, you know, we, we need to go 4-0 yeah. through this stretch. We need to go 4-1 and in the conference and hope that we have some help with somebody beating West Alabama down the road and, and possibly work, work our way back into a tie for, for first position. Well, what about West Georgia? Uh, any changes what they're doing versus what happened last year? Uh, we have not seen them on film. Uh, this will be the first time that we have an opportunity. When I finish this, I'll go over there and start watching those guys. I do know that one of our players that, that we had on our team last year, David Bailey, is now a running back for uh -huh. West Georgia. So it'll be good to see him again. Hopefully uh, we can keep him in check. He's an outstanding football player. Uh, but uh, I, think they doing, I think they're doing pretty much the same thing. The quarterback that hurt us so bad last year is, is had some academic casualties, is, is no longer there. They did get another transfer in there that I think is playing very well. Well, they, they've, that program's come back just about like every football team in our conference right now has, has gotten better and better and better over the years. So 
It's going to be a tough one, but a road trip, you'll leave Friday and head up uh, early Friday, I would assume. We will. We'll leave Friday afternoon about 2 o'clock, and we're going to stay in Noonan. Uh, it's a 2 o'clock game, so everything will kind of speed up. You know, we, we like the afternoon games, and we'll take the, about the 35, 40-minute trip uh, over to uh, to West Georgia and get ready to play. Had several guys out this week. Uh, of course, Gerald Ford comes to mind. I know you don't know anything at this point about Gerald's condition, whether he'll play or not. But uh, what, what a season he was having. Yeah, he was. And, you know, unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be ready to play again anytime you're, you're dealing with a knee situation. You have to be very careful with it. Uh, you don't want to rush it back. So I, I don't look for Gerald to be able to play. I don't look for Jeremy Grable, who has the, the rib injuries. I don't look for him to be able to play. Uh, O'Neill Cohen is going to be out again. So the three guys that we definitely had out, and also Griffin Riley, uh, he still has not overcome that hamstring. Uh, we're going to go up there a little bit limited. You know, we're, we're not going to be full strength, but, uh, you know, those guys that are behind them are going to have to step up and well, play. I was going to say, we've, we've, you've got some talented guys out there. Sean Tavius had a nice touchdown last night. Just would like to see him get, get the ball and catch it more. And, yeah. And uh, some other guys who played well last night are just, as you say, had to step up. Well, they're going to have to. You know, Reggie Lewis moved over into Gerald Ford's position. You can see the night that he had. So. We've got to continue to have those guys. Clifford Pettiford stepped in there and, and played Reggie Lewis's position, had an outstanding night. So, you know, we've got guys that are stepping up. We just got to continue to do that. All right, Coach. Good win. Get us back on the winning track. That game this coming Saturday up in Carrollton begins at 2 o'clock. You can listen to the pregame on the radio, BSU radio network. Uh, it starts at 1130 to about 1220. Then it comes up to the radio booth, and we take over 1220 to kick off at, to, or excuse me, to 120 and kick off at 2 o'clock. So we hope you'll tune in and listen to that. If you can make the trip up to Carrollton, we look forward to seeing you up there. So for the head coach, David Dean, I'm Dick Rocky. Have a wonderful week.